Now, I'm going to put up a research study. So I want to show you it's actually um, the first one on estrogen and leaky gut here. So what we're looking at in this research study, and this was, um, this was re is, it's just published a couple of years ago. So it's not a super old study. And there have been other studies that have confirmed this very thing I'm going to talk to you about. But what, this, what the researchers in this study found is that estradiol reduced, so reduced the production of the protein, uh, the name of that protein is zonulin, so it reduced zonulin expression. Okay, zonulin is a protein inside your gut, okay, between your, the cells that line your gut, but it, and it, and it's what prevents a leaky gut from happening. So it's, think of it as these little anchor proteins. So if your gut cells kind of look like this, where they're stacked like columns, okay, and then they have their little cilia-based and microcilia um, for surface area of absorption. So again, if this is the basal membrane of those cells, and then below that basal membrane, this is where, you know, if, if this is your gut lining. So again, let me, let me just make this more comprehensive for you. Okay, so this is the lumen or the, this is, you know, the intestine, right? The small intestine. The lumen, meaning this is the, the tube of the small intestine. So food is coming down. If your mouth is up there, food's coming down and it's coming through the tube. And then on either side of the basal, of the basal membrane, you have the bloodstream, right? So then you have your bloodstream and this goes to your liver. It goes to what's called your portal circulation. But what happens is food comes through and you have these proteins that kind of anchor the cells together. If you don't have these proteins that anchor the cells together, what ends up happening is you get cells that drift apart. And so then when that food or that food protein or that bacteria, whatever it is, it comes through, this is a leaky gut, right? This is basically what leaky gut looks like on the scale. So these cells, they separate or they drift apart. You get leaky gut and that leaky gut allows things in your gut to leak into your bloodstream and create systemic inflammation and contribute to autoimmune disease. So zonulin is the protein that creates these anchors. Okay, so that snaps, think of it like a Lego block, the way the little prong snaps together, right, to keep the block stable together. That's kind of what this zonulin does, is it snaps these cells together so that there's no gap in between them preventing any type of leaky gut formation. And so what this research is showing is that prescription estro estrogens reduce the expression of the protein that seals your gut lining. And that's a problem because that means all of you that are out there potentially taking estrogen for different symptoms could potentially be creating a leaky gut in that process, again, which increases your risk for the development of autoimmune disease. Now, we already know that estrogens, again, more specifically, estrogens will increase your risk for heart disease. We also know it will increase your risk for cancer. So what we're saying here now is that it increases your risk for leaky gut and subsequently autoimmune disease. So again, estradiol, whether you're taking for menopause symptoms, whether you're taking it, uh, some doctors actually also prescribe it to women in menopause for prevention of bone loss, um, or whether you're taking it for birth control or to normalize your cell cycle, or, your, or your, uh, your menstrual cycle. Again, remember that it reduces zonulin expression, creating the potential for a leaky gut scenario. Now, if you look at this research study, again, I'm gonna have that thrown back up on the screen for you. It, so you can see here, the fact that the expression of zonulin one is inhibited by estrogen indicates estrogen may increase gut permeability and as a consequence of systemic mycelium microbial translocation and its associated inflammation. If so, multiple microbial products such as RNA, DNA, peptidoglycan, and flagellin derived from bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other gastrointestinal residents may translocate into the system and cause systemic immune activation. So what does that mean? What does all that fancy talk really mean? It means that when you have a leaky gut, remember in your gut, you've got trillions 
of bacteria and viruses, and you've got fungi or micro, you know, my, your microbiome, which are the different fungus or yeast, they all produce byproducts, right? They all produce metabolic waste products. Uh, in some essence, in some research, they, some of these products are called LPS, lipopoly, lipopolysaccharides, and they penetrate, they translocate in your bloodstream. They get into your bloodstream, they activate your immune system to create an inflammatory response to attack it. See, remember, your gut's not supposed to leak. These, these chemical toxins, this bacteria, the fungus, like all that's supposed to stay in your gut. Um, I did an interview with Dr. Fasano a couple of years ago, and when I liked one of the things he said. If you guys don't know who Dr. Fasano is, he's, he's, um, he works at Harvard, and he's actually one of the doctors that discovered leaky gut through his research. But he said, what happens with leaky gut, what happens in the gut, doesn't stay in the gut. It's not like Vegas. Uh, that, those were his words. I thought that was somewhat comical. Anyway, bacteria, fungi, or fungi, and you know, other things, other uh, compounds so like food antigens, so like food proteins. These things should stay in the gut unless they're properly broken down and the carbs, the fats, the, the, the proteins or amino acids or the simple sugars or the vitamins and minerals are the things that are supposed to, their little receptors or doorways on the surface of these cells and they're, they're gated so that things that are supposed to be let in are, are checked and they're allowed to come in. And so they got, you know, so think of this as the guardian at the gate. If, you, if your guardian is on vacation, you get this leaky gut. And so all these guys get to leak through and create the systemic inflammation that can occur. And this is what can drive and trigger food protein allergies. So a lot of people say, well, how come I have allergies? I've been eating these things my whole life and didn't feel bad until you know a year ago or five years ago. It's because with leaky gut, you can become allergic. You can develop what are called acquired allergies and you can start acquiring more and more allergies because you're, as, you, as things leak through your gut barrier into your bloodstream, you're overwhelming the immune system. You're making the immune system hyper responsive almost like a soldier who's been at war too long. If, if, if that soldier has a post-traumatic stress from being at war too long, and if somebody taps that, sol sh that soldier on the shoulder, the soldier might just turn around and punch him out. Even though that's not an appropriate response, he's been so on edge for so long, he's hyper-responsive. And that's what happens to the immune system. It becomes hyper-responsive. And in that hyper-response, we get systemic inflammation. So we don't want those things leaking into the bloodstream. We want those things staying in the gut, okay? It's kind of like Vegas. Again, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Now, what happens in the gut should stay in the gut. Uh, but if you have a leaky gut, it doesn't work that way. It gets into your bloodstream, creating a major, major problem. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.